how you doing everybody it, it, it's Tuesday the 7th of September 2010 and uh, <clears throat> sort of mixed weather I'd say uh, I've been having lots of problems making this little video because uh, I've made it a couple of times and I've tried to make it a couple of times and every time I try and make it I, I lose my temper and I can't get the message across and lose when you lose your temper so I'm going to try again so just please bear with me here right this is a this is a political matter rather than anything else. It, it has a, an economic aspect, but it's only tiny. And I'll, I'll have to just go into a ex little brief explanation and then uh, I'll sort of do the parambola, as it were, the, where, where I'm going with it. Uh, it involves a coin, as it were. And on one side of the coin, you have this woman. I'm going to put her up on the, on the screen here so we can have a look at her okay I'll put it up now uh, that's our uh, health minister now this is a serious matter here it's not a joking matter I'll put it up again that woman there is our health minister in Ireland a woman called Mary Harney uh, that's all I want to say about that. On the other side of the coin is a diabolical disease, which in Ireland we have the highest rate of it in the world. Pro rata, based on our population, we have the highest number of people with this disease in the world. We've 1,250 of them who have this disease and the vast bulk of them will die from this disease and the disease is called cystic fibrosis and it's a, gen a genetic disorder and they're born with it okay now <clears throat> I don't want to go into a genetic pr uh, preamble as it were I don't, I don't want to deal with that aspect of it I just want to say every single year between 25 and 30 Irish people in particular young people die from this horrible horrible disease and it affects mainly uh, lungs people's lungs young people's lungs children's lungs and young people's lungs and also their digestive tract and what it means is they can't take nutrients either out of the air or out of the food that they eat so what happens is essentially their immune system is constantly suppressed so whereas we have an immune system of about five or six or seven constantly that's what ours goes through on a scale of ten okay their immune system operates at about one one and a half and if they get attacked by a normal type germ that would attack us say like a flu or a cold or something like that or a bacterial infection it could kill them and in fact it does every year as i said out of the 1250 a minimum of 25 people die and generally speaking they're in their teens to their early 20s okay now <clears throat> if you had a daughter or a son who had that disease and you moved up to Belfast you just shifted the house and moved up to Belfast your son or your daughter on average on average would live 12 years more just by moving up the road and the reason being that up in the north of Ireland and in the UK and in France and in all over Europe this is, a, this is an average, by the way, for all over Europe. They have dedicated, small dedicated hospitals for these people. Because these people can't go in the hospitals, like you or I can. They go in the hospital, their immune system is widely suppressed, and if they come in contact with germs and infections that other people have, it kills them. They end up in critically ill, in intensive care. So the worst place they could go is the normal hospital. That's the worst place they could go to. Now, this woman that we have as the Minister of Health has been promising for seven years, I think it's seven years, maybe it's more, that uh, she would give them this hospital, a small dedicated hospital. And by the way, when I'm, when I, when I'm talking about a hospital, this is a 35 to 40 unit hospital, 35, 40 beds. With its own little team, you know what I mean, to look after these people. It's a tiny thing. It's jumped up prefab would do, like, you know what I mean? 
yesterday she made a final statement on it. It's not going to happen for two years, which means it's not going to happen. Again, it's not going to happen. Full stop. That's essentially what she, what she said. Okay? So it's not going to happen for two years. So <clears throat> what you have to do is you have to post the question, what is to be done? What is to be done? So first of all, I'm offering this up as what I would do. I don't know what other people would do, but this is what I would do. I would draw up a little plan, and the little plan has three phases. And the first phase is, okay, I would pick it, Mary Harney and Brian Cairns home. Myself. Go down with a big placard and hand out leaflets to people going by in the front of our house and in the front of Brian Cairns' house. I'd have to probably alternate it every couple of days. <clears throat> find out where they lived, get their addresses and go down. And I'd explain that, that probably they have guards there. I'm sure they have guards. They have for Cairns, I'm sure they have Cairns. I have to explain to them what I'm doing. And if you want me to go away from here, what, you better tell the teacher if you want me to leave the front of his house and not to be embarrassing him, he'll have to go and get a court order and have me arrested. And then they'll bring me up in front of a, a judge. And the judge would probably warn me the first time and then I'd be back the next day with a pallet card again. Okay? Because see, my child's life, if it was my child, my child's life would be very important to me. I don't know about you, but my child's life would be very important to me. And other children that I would know who suffer from this disease, their lives would be important to me as well. Anyway, I'm just telling you what I would do. So you probably be the first time you probably be warned off by the court. Then you'd be up the second time, and they'd give you a big fine, fine you a big fine. And knowing me, of course, I'd end up in prison. That's what happened. Knowing me and my antics, I'd end up in prison. I'm not saying what other people would do. I'm just telling you what I would do. That's a first. That's the first thing. So I'd end up in prison for that. Then the next thing I'd do is when I got out of prison, I'd start a poster campaign and a leaflet campaign in Mary Harney's constituency. And that's the constituency of Dublin Midwest. And that's Clondalkin, Lucan, Rathcool, Sagart and Palmerstown. Okay. And I'd be out there handing out leaflets in all the shopping centres and posters up all around. Now, I mean, you have to be very, very careful of what I said in the posters and what I said in the leaflets was 100% true. And there could be no argument or no debate about it. There could be no argument or anything. And it could not, nothing that could be deemed to be uh, fractious or threatening or anything like that. Okay? Everything has to be done peacefully. And then the final thing, the coup de grace, would be I would stand against Mary Harney. I'd get the money together, I don't know what it costs, 1,600 euros or whatever it is. I'd get the money from hell or high water. I don't have that sort of money, but I'd get it. I'd sell things and I'd get 1,600 euros or whatever it is. And I'd lodge the money and I'd stand against Mary Harney on that one issue, the cystic fibrosis issue. And people would say to you, well, sure, you wouldn't be elected. That is not the point of the exercise. I would not be elected. I know I would not be elected. But she would not be elected either. Of that I can promise you. Of that I can promise you. Because while that election is going on and electioneering is going on, you can do lots of things. And you can appeal to the best part and the best interests of people for your children. And I can promise you you may not win, but I promise you, she would not win it either. And whoever would be the incumbent, next incumbent health minister, what you did would not be lost on them. And the first thing on their agenda would be the Cystic Fibrosis Hospital. Please believe me. Street politics is a funny business. But you know what? It's just like the bankers. The bankers did it the night they went into Brian Lenehan. They stood out on the street and they got together before them in the government buildings and they went in. They put their hand into their briefcases, all of them, and they pulled out financial 38s and put them to Brian Lenehan's head and said, Dear Minister of Finance, if you don't give us the money we want, we're going to implode this country. That's what they said. So it's a quid 
pro quo. You're not putting a gun to anybody's head. You're just going to the great court, and that's the people. And you're asking them, I need your support. I demand your support to stop this killing, this needless and senseless killing of Irish young men and women. We'll talk more.